Anthony Sanchez was convicted of murdering an OU dance student in 1996. Is about forgiveness, and Sanchez says he's not going to apologize for something he says he did not do. An Oklahoma death row inmate says he will skip his upcoming clemency hearing. But make no mistake, there are indeed guilty parties who are to blame. He has also granted clemency before to spare the life of Julius Jones. Countdown to justice. Physical attacker demise row inmate Anthony Sanchez faces impending ending in just seven days. The clock ticks as his fate hangs in the balance. Conviction and crime. Anthony Sanchez, a name synonymous with a heinous crime, was convicted for the brutal physical attack and slaying of Julie Buskin, a 21-year-old college student in 1996. The case remains a stark reminder of the shocking and tragic nature of violent crimes that can shake communities to their core. The story began in the city of Oklahoma, where Julie Buskin's promising life was abruptly cut short. In the fall of 1996, Julie was a college student striving to pursue her dreams. On a fateful day, she crossed paths with Anthony Sanchez, an individual with a dark and violent history. Sanchez's criminal record included charges of burglary and robbery, foreshadowing his propensity for criminal behavior. On the evening of the crime, Julie Buskin's life took a tragic turn when she encountered Sanchez. It is alleged that Sanchez broke into her home, subjected her to a brutal physical attack, and ultimately ended her life in a shocking act of violence. Anthony Sanchez was convicted of murdering an OU dance student in 1996. Evan, Sanchez has always said that he's innocent. The horrifying details of the crime sent shock waves through the community and left Julie's family devastated. The legal journey that followed was one of grief, anger, and a relentless pursuit of justice. Evidence linking Sanchez to the crime scene, coupled with eyewitness testimonies, painted a grim picture of the chilling moments that unfolded on that fateful day. The prosecution argued that the brutality of the crime left no room for mercy or leniency. Years turned into decades, and the case faced its share of twists and turns. With every appeal, the pain of Buskin's family was rekindled as they relived the trauma of their loss. Sanchez maintained his innocence throughout the legal battle, claiming that he was wrongly convicted. Yet the weight of evidence and the nature of the crime cast a shadow of doubt over his claims. Clemency in Pardon Efforts The impending ending of Anthony Sanchez has been marked by a complex legal battle centering on efforts to secure clemency and pardon. Sanchez, 44 years old, has adamantly maintained his innocence in the slaying of Julie Buskin, 21 years old, who tragically lost her life in 1996. From his confinement in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, Sanchez has vocalized his disbelief and shock at the accusations that led to his demise sentence. Facing the prospect of ending, Sanchez has offered a chance for clemency by Republican Governor Kevin Stitt. However, Sanchez has made the surprising decision to decline this opportunity, citing a lack of hope that the hearing would result in his sentence being commuted. An Oklahoma death row inmate says he will skip his upcoming clemency hearing. Is about forgiveness, and Sanchez says he's not going to apologize for something he says he did not do. His resolute stance stems from a deep-seated conviction that he was wrongly accused and convicted of the crime. Sanchez's recounting of the circumstances leading to his arrest portrays a man caught in a bewildering nightmare, a young father eager to move forward with his life after serving his initial sentence. He suddenly found himself facing capital punishment charges. He describes the moment he learned of the allegations as his insides just dropped, feeling the weight of a world that was rapidly crumbling around him. Throughout his trial, Sanchez claims he was portrayed as a monstrous figure, his defense attorneys allegedly failing to adequately present his case. He points to instances where he was made to wear restraints throughout the proceedings, further emphasizing his sense of being unfairly treated. 
Sanchez alleges that his alibis were not adequately verified and important details about his living situation were overlooked which could have corroborated his claims of innocence. Despite these allegations, the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals recently rejected Sanchez's appeal, maintaining that the evidence against him remains compelling. The legal battle surrounding Sanchez's case highlights the complex dynamics of the criminal justice system, including the challenges faced by those seeking clemency and the intricate web of evidence and testimonies that shape the outcomes of such high-stakes proceedings. DNA Evidence Disputed Oklahoma Attorney General Gentner Drummond has strongly emphasized the overwhelming evidence linking Anthony Sanchez to the brutal physical misconduct and slaying of Julie Buskin. Drummond has denounced Sanchez's attempt to shift blame onto his deceased father, deeming it a cowardly decision. DNA analysis has discredited this assertion and Drummond contends that such claims belittle the importance of DNA evidence which has played a pivotal role in exonerating wrongfully convicted individuals as well as confirming guilt. Drummond asserts that Sanchez's guilt is unquestionable and vows to ensure justice is served. In response to Sanchez's claims, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation conducted new DNA testing using a sample of Sanchez Sr.'s blood. The testing concluded that the DNA did not match that found on Buskin's leotard. Sanchez and his supporters argue that the DNA evidence was manipulated and erroneous, advocating for the retesting of the original sample. They also contest the credibility of other evidence in the case, including fingerprints and hair taken from Buskin's vehicle, which they assert were not conclusively linked to Sanchez. Sanchez acknowledges having mixed emotions about the assertion that his father could be Buskin's slayer, citing his deep love for his father despite the serious allegations. He points out that a police sketch of the perpetrator from the 1990s resembles his father, further complicating the narrative. Governor Stitt's Stands on Clemency Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt has maintained a strict stance on the issue of clemency even in rare instances where the Pardon and Parole Board recommends it. Stitt's reluctance to grant clemency is evident despite the board's recommendations, illustrating his stringent approach to capital punishment cases. Governor Stitt's track record reflects his stance as he has granted clemency only once. In November, he made the exceptional decision to commute the demise sentence of Julius Jones, a demise row inmate, just moments before Jones was slated to undergo a lethal injection. He has also granted clemency before to spare the life of Julius Jones. But make no mistake, there are indeed guilty parties who are to blame. This particular case marked a significant departure from Stitt's usual approach, underscoring the gravity of the situation and the rarity of his decision to intervene. Stitt's position on clemency speaks to his firm commitment to upholding the law while acknowledging the gravity of decisions surrounding life and demise. Impending Ending As the ending date of September 21, 2023 approaches for Anthony Sanchez, convicted of the brutal physical misconduct and slaying of Julie Buskin in 1996, a wave of advocacy and protest has emerged, reflecting the complex and divisive nature of capital punishment. With Sanchez scheduled to face the ultimate punishment, various procedural aspects come into focus. The legal battle surrounding his case has showcased the struggles of those seeking clemency and the reluctance of Governor Kevin Stitt to grant it even in rare circumstances. Amidst the countdown to the ending, Sanchez has maintained his innocence, claiming he was wrongly convicted due to flawed evidence and legal mishandling. His attempt to shift blame to his deceased father for the crime, discredited by DNA analysis, has sparked outrage and debate. Advocates argue that advances in DNA evidence should not be manipulated and are demanding a retesting of the original samples. As opposing sides clash over Sanchez's fate, the case underscores broader issues in the justice system. 
Supporters of the ending emphasize the overwhelming evidence against Sanchez and asserts the need for justice to be served. However, critics question the reliability of evidence, citing discrepancies in DNA testing and the absence of conclusive links between Sanchez and the crime scene. The impending ending prompts advocates to voice their concerns, highlighting the potential fallibility of the justice system. Protests advocating for a re-evaluation of the case, a re-examination of evidence, and a reconsideration of the demise penalty's morality have grown louder as the ending date draws near. Ending Controversy and Reactions as the scheduled execution of Anthony Sanchez on September 21, 2023 approaches, a range of emotions and opinions ripple through the victim's family and the broader community. The brutal physical attack and slaying of Julie Buskin in 1996 have left a lasting impact, with the impending ending bringing a mix of closure, anger, and sorrow. The victim's family has been vocal in seeking justice for Buskin's tragic demise, emphasizing the need for closure and retribution. Their anguish and grief have spurred discussions about the purpose and effectiveness of the demise penalty in cases like this. In contrast, the broader community response reflects the ongoing debates over the morality, efficacy, and potential fallibility of capital punishment. While some segments of the community advocate for the ultimate punishment as a means of retribution and deterrence, others raise concerns about potential errors in the justice system, the possibility of executing innocent individuals, and the ethics of state-sanctioned slayings. The case of Anthony Sanchez has reopened discussions about the fairness and reliability of evidence, the adequacy of legal representation, and the role of the DNA analysis in determining guilt. Advocacy groups and protesters have rallied against the ending, urging a re-evaluation of the evidence and an examination of broader issues surrounding the demise penalty. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.